Hi everyone, Yasmin Basson here, founder of Drake Holdings and the financial director of Lead Optimizers. Today I've got a very, very special guest, a social entrepreneur and also somebody that's currently traveled the whole world. Um, I think it's like a nine month travel around the whole world with his family of five. Hi, Vincent van der Linde. Hello, Jasper. How's it going, mate? I'm very good. Thank you very much. I'm ex very excited to hear your story about all your travels and obviously also how you got to travel for nine months. I think a lot of people, I know I'm a bit envious of you traveling the whole world, but uh, in a good way. But I think there's <laughs> a few other people that <laughs> will also be a bit like me. Uh, but yeah, let me um, tell us how you got to travel and uh, what you're doing for a living. Well, thanks, Jasper. You know, I um, it's a good question, actually. Um, I'm 34 years old now, and I, about uh, 12 years ago, my wife and I started a network marketing business, and we uh, got to work at the age of 23, just um, part-time, you know, working on building an asset, building a number of assets, because obviously from there, as you know, um, we went into... Um, you know, buying some property and investments and so on and just, uh, but we needed something really to start the cash flow and, and start going. So, so we chose network marketing as a vehicle for us to achieve our, um, our financial freedom. And it took us three years to get to a place where we didn't have to work in a job anymore. We, 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 could, we could both quit our jobs and uh, essentially we were financially free then. So, um, yeah, that's basically where we started uh, 12 years ago. And it's been amazing, you know? Um, so yeah. It was awesome. I've, I've been part of your journey from, I think about from the start, maybe I missed one year, but I, I was pretty much involved with your business um, from the start. It was great growing with you and yes. uh, also connect with you on various, we were going to chat about it a bit later, but on all the various self-development um, that we do and uh, books and everything that we read, we share a lot. And yes. uh, yeah, it's very nice to connect every now and again. Um, like I said, you, you're busy traveling. Um, run us through where, where you've been, where you go to, and how you got to, to, to travel. Um, well, to, to be honest with you, um, this has always been a dream of ours. Um, my wife and I have written down that we want to travel the world. And in fact, we've written down that we... You know, as an affirmation, we've written down, we travel around the world with our children. And we did this years ago and looked at, you know, stared at this stuff every day, sort of looked at uh, the affirmations every day. I'm a very strong believer in affirmations and speaking your life into existence and so on. So we were doing that years ago. And, um, and we decided that when we reach a certain level uh, in what we're doing or a certain income level, a certain passive income level, if you want to call it that, you know, money that comes in for work you did a long time ago. Uh, the beautiful thing about the sort of business we're involved in, and I'm sure you've, you know, there are many forms of passive income, many forms of residual income. I would strongly encourage everybody to, as fast as possible, get onto the passive income mindset because we all have 24 hours in a day. We all have so, uh, you know, uh, so much time to do something with. You can either be working on somebody else's dreams or you can start working on your own. And if you want to work on your own dreams, you have to start building passive income. So, um, so that's what we did. Um, and we, you know, we started with that process and started affirmations and started really affirming how we want our life to look like. And we agreed that when we reach a certain passive income level that we would go on a trip around the world because the beautiful thing about passive income is, you know, it comes in every single month, whether you work or not, whether you are there or not, whether you are showing up in your office or not, or, you know, you can take your office around the world with you. Yeah, I mean, my office is my cell phone, you know, that's, that's my office and I can travel around the world and take my office with me. And, um, that's one of the things that attracted me to this business. So, so we started traveling, uh, we decided we we're going to go on a nine month trip around the world. Um, we decided we we're going to go on a, on, in a westerly direction. We started in South Africa and went to Amsterdam, uh, spent about two weeks in Amsterdam, just looking, just exploring Amsterdam and some parts of Europe. It was winter time, start of our trip, and then we went from Amsterdam, started flying in a westerly direction around the world uh, for nine months. We're, we're in, uh, we've, we've done about four and a half, five months now, so we've got, we're about halfway, just over halfway. 
And some of the places we visited um, are, uh, we flew first to Hawaii. So we spent a month in Maui, in Hawaii, which was amazing. Anybody that's been to Hawaii will, I'm sure they'll agree with me that it's just a phenomenal place. Um, then we carried on going west and continued to the Philippines. We were about a month in the Philippines. Some of the most amazing turquoise water and sea life and just, it's amazing. Uh, that was amazing. The Philippines and we got to do island hopping and explore some of the most beautiful islands in the world. We carried on going to, the, then we went to Cambodia and saw the beautiful temples of Angkor Wat and uh, some of that amazing culture and history. From We were there about two weeks from Cambodia. We went to Bali. We lived in Bali for about a month, Indonesia, and saw some of those amazing so sites. The, saw the rice fields. I don't know if anybody's ever seen that movie. Uh, I'm sure your, your viewers have seen um, Eat, Pray, Love with Julia Roberts. And she, the end of the movie, she spends her time in Bali where she falls in love with that guy. And so we were there. We were in those rice fields riding around, you know, with scooters and just enjoying it over there. It was amazing in those rice fields, the same place where she was. So it's beautiful, rice fields and palm trees. Um, you know, from Bali, we went to, um, where did we go to next? We went to the Maldives for, for a week and a half. Uh, after the Maldives, we went to Turkey and that's where we are right now. We're in Istanbul, Turkey. And we're about to go into Europe for the next three months or so and explore. I don't, we'll see where we're going to go, but I think it's going to be Italy, Rome, Amalfi Coast, Spain, um, Germany, and some more countries. So it's, it's, it's a real adventure, and it wouldn't have been possible without, number one, obviously building passive income, and number two, really working on ourselves. You know, you said earlier about personal development, and uh, I was actually commenting on your personal development since I got to know you. You've, you've number, first, of all, <laughs> first of all, when I met you, you couldn't speak English very well, and now I'm very impressed with your level of English is a hundred times better than what it was. So that's personal development right there, you know, and myself, I, you know, Yolanda and I, we've been working on our thinking, working on our mindset for years. I mean, it's been years, just reading books, listening to CDs, working on ourselves. And I think, uh, I believe that that is probably the greatest reward with this sort of business that I'm involved in that you get that for free. You don't even know you're getting that, but to move on in this business, uh, you have to move on in life. You have to move on in your personal development, which is, which is an, an incredible, rewarding experience, you know? So, while, while, thank you for the compliment, by the way. <laughs> but uh, while we're on the topics of books, um, is there any book that you've recently read that, that you can advise somebody, or maybe a startup entrepreneur, maybe a book that you maybe think is a good first book for, for someone to read? Well, <laughs> obviously, We've got a whole bunch of books that we work with and recommend to people. But, um, you know, if I have to think about some books that really made a big difference to me um, that I recently reviewed and went through, uh, the first book I would recommend people read is called um, The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. It's just a phenomenal book that explains how, you know, there's so many people in today's society which are in this ATM mentality or, you know, some people call it the microwave mentality where, you know, you want it now. You don't want to wait for your meal to be cooked in the oven for six hours. You want to stick it in the microwave and push a button. It must be ready in 15 minutes. So there's this society that we are, we are almost conditioned in our society to have things now. And that goes against a lot of business principles. If you go and ask successful people and successful entrepreneurs, um, you'll find that a lot of them, they didn't achieve their success like that. I spoke to, I interviewed an entrepreneur a little while ago and he said, you know what? One of the greatest lessons I can tell you is that every time I try to make money fast, I lost it all, you know, and that was very valuable for me. He said, every time I try to make money fast, I lost it all. And uh, he says, there's a lot more to be said for consistency being, you know, pitching up every day, just doing the work every day, just doing the work every week, even though, you know, you're not going to see the result tomorrow. Um, just doing it, just doing the work and believing and knowing that it's going to happen. And that's what the book is about, The Slight Edge. Um, it's, there's a term called delayed gratification. You must delay your gratification, uh, which is very difficult for a lot of people to do. But let me give you an example like this that, that I, I believe it came from that book. Um, you know, if you eat, a, if you eat a, a salad today, 
and you eat a salad every day for, for the whole year, you know, versus eating a slice of cake. If you eat a, a, a massive slice of, you know, mug and bean cake, they've got those massive portions, you know what I mean? So if you eat a massive portion of mug and bean meringue every day, uh, or you eat a salad every day, you know, tomorrow you won't notice the difference. There'll be no difference in your body tomorrow or the next day even, or the next day. But over a year, you're going to see, literally, you're going to see the difference. So uh, that's an example of how it works. So if you are working on yourself or working on your business or working on success principles, and you think, oh, this isn't happening for me, and you just give up. And so many entrepreneurs have given up too soon just before things start happening. Um, so that's what that book's about. That was amazing for me. This, the Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. Another book that was amazing for was called uh, Your Right to Be Rich uh, by Napoleon Hill. Uh, Napoleon Hill wrote a number of amazing books. Um, the most famous one is called Think and Grow Rich. Uh, but Think and Grow Rich is, is an amazing book and I read it. But it's, it's, if, if any of you have ever read Think and Grow Rich, uh, all of your listeners that are, that are listening in, it's a tough book to read initially because it's like you have to digest it. Yes. You know what I mean? It's like when I read that book, I have to read it chapter for chapter because it's quite a difficult book to read, I found. Um, uh, the right, your right to be rich is the same information, but I found it's delivered in a very practical way. Maybe I was just ready for the book, to be honest with you, but it's a very, very good book, uh, Your Right to be Rich, one of his more recent books, because um, his foundation publishes this material as time goes by. Another book uh, that really changed my life, and it's not just for my type of business, it's for any sort of business. It's called Launching a Leadership Revolution by Oren Woodward and Chris Brady. This is just a phenomenal book. It was the best book I read in 2012, and I keep on reviewing it um, you know, every year. It's an amazing book, Launching a Leadership Revolution. And then the last one is a really fun book that I enjoyed along the way, um, uh, written by Lewis Pugh. Lewis Pugh is that famous guy that um, swam across the North Pole in that ice-cold water. Uh, he's that crazy guy that swims on Mount Everest uh, to raise awareness about climate change and so on. So the, the book's name is 21 Yaks and a Speedo. Um, 21 Yaks and a Speedo by Lewis Pugh. It's a fantastic book. Really easy to read. So those, those are four books that I just thought I'd mention. Um, but lots of, there's so many books out there. You know, leaders are readers, right? Not all readers are leaders, but all leaders are readers. You have to be reading books to, to, to get in. So, yeah. No, I agree with you. I think we must uh, all... Maybe not on a level of, of a book a book a week, but uh, I think we all need to to educate ourselves and that, that, you don't uh, you don't have to read like you, like I say a bunch of books, but rather take one book and really digest it. Thinking I read like I say it's it's a very good book, a very difficult book. Um, I also struggled um, with it. Uh, I had to read it in some parts because it it <laughs> it brain, uh, break, uh, broke my my brain. Um, but uh, it was very good, um, and you're right to be rich. I think that's more audio, audio book, um, audio, audio book. Um, if, if I'm you, right. you can get the physical copy and the audio book copy. Um, absolutely, you know the audio book is the audio book is phenomenal because it's actually him speaking on the audio book, yes. uh, yeah. Napoleon Hill. So it's phenomenal. Yeah. yeah, I think it's a bit, a bit easier read or listen than, than maybe the book. So it's but yeah, I, I don't recommend anybody to be that maybe their first book to read. Yeah. Um, very good principles, but, but like I said, difficult. Uh, you mentioned quite a few habits that you already, I mean, you told us about a few habits, affirmations of you and your wife decide you want some, someday want to travel the world. Um, have you, do you have any other morning or evening rituals uh, and daily habits? Like I said, you already do consistent work with your business. Um, and I think the word consistency with habits is, is the golden rule. A, a, a word but uh, yeah give us some ideas of, of what you're doing in your morning morning and evening rituals and your habits um well i mean this is probably the the, the place where where real on real entrepreneurs are separated from people that are just you know giving it a go um is your daily habits and uh you have to know that you're gonna have to work on your habits every single day all the time we are slaves of our habits we're creatures of habits and if you say, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm going to get out of that, or I'm, I'm tough, I don't, I'm, not a, I'm not that, then you're just kidding yourself. We are all slaves of habits. You might as well make them good habits. 
So if you know you're going to be a slave to your habits, you might as well work on your habits and make them good habits because they will create your life. Uh, so so um, one habit that really worked well for me, I learned this from my mentor, is uh, make your calls first thing every single day. You know, you can make your calls anytime, I guess, but if you procrastinate and you leave it for too long or you leave it for late in the day, it doesn't happen. And I found other people that are working in jobs and so on, especially on a Monday morning. People on a Monday morning are in the mode of getting things done. If you can get phone calls happening before 10 a.m. on a Monday morning, and every morning, Monday morning, Tuesday morning, Wednesday, every morning, get your phone calls done. Make it whatever you want. Some, some of you might want to do 10 calls a day. Some of you might want to do five or six calls a day. Even five calls a day before 10 a.m. It's incredible what that does. Um, calls to your clients, obviously in my business, I have to be on the phone, you know, we are, while you're building this type of business, you, there's a lot of time spent on the phone, but in any business, it doesn't matter whether you're selling insurance or you're selling, uh, you know, selling stuff out of, out of a store, you know, with, with uh, stock on the shelves or we're all selling something. If you're an entrepreneur, you are selling something. And this whole thing about people saying, I don't want to sell, I'm not a salesman. Well, none of us are salesmen, I think. And all of us are salesmen. We're all selling something. You know, whether it's selling ourselves, if you're a public speaker or whether it's selling a service, if you're uh, in your sort of work, uh, you know, or whether it's selling a uh, something off the shelf, a physical object or, or selling whatever or selling anything, you know, we're all actually selling something or selling time, you know, as an attorney or whatever, selling your, your expertise. We are actually all selling something. And for to sell something, you're going to have to prospect people. You're going to have to make calls. You're going to have to communicate with people. So if you can make those phone calls, First thing in the day, that goes a long way, I found. Um, it creates a bit of a funnel or a bit of a, a pipeline of clients. Because if you, and I teach this to my, to, 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 to my team all the time, if you create this pipeline of contacts and clients through all the phone calls, if you see if you do five or six or 10 phone calls every morning before 10, there's this constant flow of follow-up phone calls that need to be made and appointments that need to be uh, uh, had and appointments that were made that need to be had and so there's work lined up in the pipeline if you do the five or six phone calls but if you don't do the phone calls in the morning there's no work and I find so many people that want to be entrepreneurs that say it's just not working for me you know there's no clients there's no this work coming in there's no well start with the basics which is five or ten phone calls every morning before ten get the work lined up and that works for everything I find you know um, so that's definitely one of the daily habits that I would say has been massive for me and, um, about bad habits, you know, obviously once again, you have to change your habits. If you find you've got a bad habit, work on that. There's a great book that I love reading called, uh, the greatest salesman in the world, which is a classic, but it's a beautiful little story and a book that you can pick up and read very quickly, but it's got these powerful scrolls in that if you repeat them to yourself, over and over again, Napoleon Hill talks about auto-suggestion, you know, affirmations for yourself. If you keep on repeating yourself to yourself every day, you know, I always say that your subconscious mind can't take a joke. So if you're telling the truth or you're telling a lie, it doesn't really matter because your subconscious mind will give you what you keep on repeating. If you say I'm fat and I'm broke, guess what? You're going to find that you start picking up weight and you have less money. But if you say, uh, man, I'm wealthy. I'm so fired up. I'm helping people. I'm so excited about my life. Your subconscious mind will help you create in your life more things to be excited about, to be happy about, to be focused on, to, you know, that's just how it works. So whatever you repeat, the story you keep on repeating about your life and telling yourself, that's what you get more of uh, because your, your mind can't take a joke. It doesn't, know, it doesn't care really whether you're telling the truth or not. It only cares what you are telling, the story you're telling. So definitely one of the habits that I would encourage people to do is get into a long-term thinking habit, not the short-term ATM microwave mentality that I spoke about earlier. Get into a long-term uh, mindset. You know, today will pass. This thing that you're stressed out and worried about now, I mean, within an hour, it's gone. Or within a day, it's over. You know, it's not really such a big deal. If you can cultivate a long-term mindset, I mean... Um, Invest for the long term as well in your mind, in what you read, in what you listen to. Invest with your money uh, for the long run, not short, not short term, for the long run. You know, um, I also want to encourage people to create, not, you know, some people have a one year plan, some people have a six month plan, some people have a 
a five-year plan. I want to encourage people, yes, to create a short-term plan, you know, a one-week plan. What are you doing in the next week to really bring to the bottom line, to really bring, uh, the, you know, we call it the money-making activity. What, are you, what, what is your plan for the next month? What is your plan for the next year? What is your plan for the next 10 years? But more importantly, what is your plan for the next 200 years? What are you leaving behind for your kids? How are you going to leave this world? Are you going to leave it better than you found it? How, what legacy are you building? Um, and then working backwards from that, you know, to have, a good, to have a good year, you need to have a good month. And to have a good month, you need to have a good week. And to have a good week, you need to have a good day. So that's why it's important to make today. Think about today. What's the best thing you can do today for your business, for, you know, the bottom line and, and so on. So that's probably the best advice I can give on, on habits, you know. There's a well-known man that says um, five little wins each day gives you 150 wins every month and 1,800 wins per year. So it's that small, daily, consistent efforts that you put in, like you say, small, daily wins. Even if it's well, small, like even just a little small thing. Yes. Just keep going and keep, just keep, keep winning. And you will, will not always win. There, it will definitely be not failures and don't see it as failures see it as lessons and, and build from there you see, even see a failure as a lesson and as a as a win one of your five wins because it definitely yes. wins because next time you can you can improve on that awesome i love that i love that i want to just go back one step regarding your goals um a lot of people do various ways of 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 tracking their goals and maybe more important to to apply their go their goals and I know I write down I've got a journal I write down my like you say your daily weekly yearly and and five year goals how do you go about that is it just merely a conversation between you and your wife is it or is it more uh, structured kind of recording in a journal or in some of some sort. So I would, I mean, this is a great question. I would strongly recommend that, um, you know, people uh, play with what works. The most important thing regarding your goals and your dreams is um, that you feel great when you're, when you are doing it. Uh, that's your sort of cue that you're doing it right. So if you are, you know, if you're reading a statement that you've made and actually you're feeling terrible because you don't have petrol in your car, if you make a statement like, I'm just, you know, I hope that one day I can have petrol in my car again. You know, that doesn't feel great. It feels like lack and it feels terrible. So that's not a goal or a dream. You want to write down something that makes you feel inspired and wonderful and, and almost like, you know, what if that could happen? Wow, if that could just ever happen to me, I would feel fantastic, you know. And so it must inspire you. It must move you emotionally. And so that's why I would say, um, for me, what, what me, what I do personally, I, I'm a great believer in dream boards. If, uh, I mean, my wife and I, my wife is incredible with this, you know, um, she went to, I don't know where she went to a hardware store, I think, and got a massive board and made it look nice, made the board look nice. And basically on the board, she pinned, um, she pinned dreams. So just, so this is what we did. We went onto Pinterest and Pinterest is like a pin board uh, website basically or, a, a, you know, there's an app as well you can download and you can create pin boards. And we created a dream board pin board. One, she created one and I created one. And on there, you just collect photos. Pinterest is really good at this. You just, it leads you to related photos. You collect beautiful photos of what you want your life to look like. I mean, the house you want to live in, uh, traveling, seeing, um, the world, seeing, you know, uh, the desert and seeing, uh, you know, flying from a plane. I remember the pictures I am just thinking about the pictures I had on my dream board, you know, flying over a desert with a little plane, a massive hot air balloon. And, you know, that's one of the dreams that came true. I had that thing on my board for five years. And now in Cappadocia, when we were there in Turkey, I mean, we woke up at 4 a.m. and we were in a hot air balloon flying over. It was like, a, it, was a, it was incredible. It was a dream come true for me. So, um, so these things work, you know. So I would recommend, you know, what we did was went onto Pinterest, got all these pictures, put on the dream board on Pinterest, and then just go to like a printing shop or print it yourself. Uh, we put two 
you know, pictures on one page, on one A4 page, cut it out, stick it up on the board, fill up that thing with how you want your life to look like and put it there where you can see it every day. It must stare you in the face. That's one thing I did and Yolandi did that was incredible. The other thing is just on notes on my phone, just on the notes app, I wrote down affirmations, uh, you know, wrote down stuff that I can read every day, wrote down how I want my life to look like. Uh, I, I remember writing down one of the affirmations I wrote down was I, Vincent, have an excited, positive, winning mental attitude. And I would say this to myself every single day. Um, you know, and I, and I, Vincent, attract and draw um, powerful, winning leaders into my business. And, and you know, I would, I would reaffirm these things all the time. I would say uh, stuff like I live in the most beautiful, I, I live in a beautiful neighborhood with lots of space to play with trees and you know, and this is exactly where we live now. We've got this house that we're actually renovating now while we're traveling, but it's got beautiful trees and there's lots of space and, and it's, it's incredible. Once you start getting into the habit of working with your mindset, it is incredible what happens that you actually start getting your dreams, start happening to you, starts coming true. So the best advice I can give you is do something that makes you feel good. Um, whether it's writing down an affirmation that makes you feel great, whether it's sticking out pictures on a board, whether it's all of those things, you must start living in the story of how you want your life to look like and it will start happening. To you. I want to lastly just ask you, this webinar series is all about, well, mostly about employ people that employed, employees, stepping into the entrepreneur world, um, which is, two different mindsets yes. and I know you gave a lot of tips already and it was really inform informative information um, just give me one tip for this overwhelmed person want to jump into the entrepreneur world and pool just give them one sentence or two sentences of advice to close down okay well I mean that's that's, uh, I was an employee when I started. I, I was working in a gallery in the waterfront in Cape Town, selling artwork. And that's where I started when we were 23. So I know exactly what it's like to get up at 5 a.m. in the morning uh, in, in Gordon's Bay to get into your car and be on time uh, at work in Cape Town, uh, driving the dark when it's cold and raining in winter in Cape Town. So I know exactly what that's like. The, the, the thing about an employee is that, unfortunately, a lot of um, work environments step on your dreams and don't want you to step out of the box because their job is obviously maybe threatened or the way the system is set up that it's not, it's not, con it's not conducive for them to have you uh, think for yourself too much. So they want you to conform. And that's why, and that I think is the enemy of greatness, the enemy of uh, uh, entrepreneurship is that conformity. So the best advice I can give to any employee is, you have to start working on number one is delayed gratification. Like I spoke about, stop trying to just sell a unit of time for a unit of money. That's not how you get rich. You need to start almost working for free. You know, adding value, adding value. Adding exactly. Value. Exactly. Yes. If, if you can rather focus on adding value for free, forget about the money, forget about the income. If you start adding value, guess what? You actually get good at adding value. And then, you, you actually add value more and more. And the person at the end of the day that adds the most value will get, will get paid the most. The person that changes the most lives will get paid the most. People will line up from wherever to come and listen to you and learn from you if you're willing to add value. Um, I've got a nice story for you actually to end off. I listened to a very well-known uh, motivational speaker recently. I saw him live. I was, he's one of the legends and I was privileged to see him live in Dallas, Dallas Texas. And uh, he said... He did, they did a study, somebody did a study, I'm not sure who did the study, on some of the highest income earners in America corporate. And they found that in a job, it would be like a company like General Motors or uh, IBM or something like that. There would be these people that started from nothing. They, they, they came into an office and had their first interview, but they worked their way up and today they are being paid, in some cases, a hundred times more than some of the, the lower income people. And they wanted to know how is this even possible that there could be this massive discrimination, this massive 
or not discrimination, but this massive gap between them and, and other people. And they did a study on these people and they found out what they all had in common was this thing. This is how the interview went. Their first interview that they came in to, to have a job was like this. They had their interview, the boss asked questions, checked them out, and at the end of the questions they said, the boss asked, is there anything you would like to ask before we close? They said, yes, actually, I would like to know from you, in your opinion, you now this is the employee asking the boss, I would like to know from you, in your opinion, what is the number one thing that this company needs to move to the next level? And then the boss would sit and think and they'd say, wow. And it would always be something like, wow, if we could have a better sales force, that would be amazing. Or if we could have a better IT department, that would be amazing. Or if we could have a better social presence or a better production line or a better innovation research and development department. And they said, oh, okay, fantastic. And then they went to work learning how to do that thing. They would spend on average two hours a day learning how to do that one thing while other people were out partying and out having whatever, doing whatever they do. They would sit and they would study for two hours a day how to get good at that. And that was the one thing they all had in common. And at the end of it all, over the years, they ended up earning a hundred times more than the other people. So the advice I would give to employees right now is get out of the microwave mindset. Stop trying to trade one hour of time for one hour of money. You know, one unit of time for one unit of money. Start practicing delayed gratification and start learning how to motivate yourself. Don't wait for other people to motivate you. Don't wait for other people to kick you out of bed in the morning and tell you what you, that you need to get started. You need to, you need to do this. Come on. You need to be great. Um, start learning how to motivate yourself. Start learning how to inspire yourself. Start reading books. Start listening to CDs. Start doing whatever it takes. Start hang, hanging out with the right people so that you are inspired every day. You've got to start being a self-starter. You can't wait for the world and other people to kickstart you every day. So that's the number one. The number, those are the two main things that I would advise all employees to, to know. That's beautiful. Awesome. Thank you very much. Lastly, I, th I said there was the last question, but I want you to, I, you might pro pro probably my, my highest technology of highest, uh, most, most improved technology client I've, I know. I want you to just quickly th shoot three, three apps that you use. Just that come, it comes into your mind. Um, okay. So I love, like you say, I love technology and I love, um, you know, working with smartphones and, um, technology and so on. But interesting, interesting that you say that because in my line of business, in my line of business, um, I actually want to encourage people to get away from technology because there's too much time spent on technology and it actually steals away from personal touch. Um, more people want connection these days. That's why there's some, such an influx in Facebook and social media, you know, Instagram and all, all these people want to get onto these social apps because they're looking for more connection. So if you can find a way to actually sit down face to face with people more, it's going to be very powerful. You are separating yourself from everybody else if you're willing to do that. So I would encourage people to, as far as possible, get off technology when you're actually building a relationship. Try not to build relationships on technology. Try to get off technology for building relationships. But technology is amazing for making new contacts and meeting people um, and actually educating yourself and improving yourself. So some of the apps that really uh, worked well for me, uh, one of them was, uh, some of them are financial apps. I know some of the banks are, are already starting to do this where they're looking at your balance sheet and your, uh, you, you know, you can look at your income statement and your balance sheet and you can check it out and get a bit of an understanding of the principles. Um, I think that's really good. You know, I didn't go very far with accounting in school, but any entrepreneur should know a little bit about accounting so that, uh, you know what I mean? You know, for instance, one of the great accounting principles is if you spend more than you earn, you're going broke, you know, and that, that you don't need a genius. Good advice. <laughs> you don't need a genius to know that, you know? So, um, Anyway, so that's one of the things that, that, that was great. So one of the apps was, there's an app called 24, uh, 22.7. I think Old Mutual um, introduced it. 
it's a similar sort of app to what some of the banks are doing now. It just helps you track your finances and really get, get, uh, get, get, get your head around this idea of there's a balance sheet. I'm growing my assets. I'm reducing my liabilities. That's how I'm going to get rich, you know? So just a bit of an understanding of that. That was a good app for me uh, to use for a while. And, um, but by far the app that really changed my life was Audible. It's really simple and basic, but just the Audible app um, has been amazing for me because I can listen to books. I can list while I'm busy driving to places and whatever. I can actually listen to a millionaire, a multimillionaire, a billionaire uh, telling their story. And I'm spending that time with them. That 15 minutes, that 20 minutes, that half an hour, I'm spending the time with that person and learning from them. Um, so yeah, I would definitely say Audible was one of the most powerful apps. And, uh, but I want to encourage people to explore. The greatest advice I can give you is don't build relationships online if you can. Try and build them offline. It just, your loyalty level goes way up if you build relationships offline. But meet people online, you know. Contacts and inviting, that's great for online stuff, for online stuff. I must tell you, I think Audible is probably, from all the people I've interviewed, the highest number one app that everybody encouraged people to have. That's Come on, also, Audible. That's also yes. my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely also my favorite, uh, especially if you commute a lot. Um, like you, you travel a lot, um, being on airplanes and wherever. Um, but I mean, generally, if you, even if you're an employee, um, you do travel to work. Like you said, you, you woke up every morning at five to, to get to the waterfront. Um, I mean, ample time to read a book a week. Exactly. Or, or, uh, listen to a book a week. Um, exactly. So I wanna further agree with you. I mean, I, I think we discussed it some time ago as well, but I've started uh, doing social media fasting during the week. I'm just active on LinkedIn, but uh, that's more like a professional side. But uh, social media, I'm trying to limit my life without it as far as possible. Maybe some weekends spend with it, but I connect. Um, I mean, Zoom is nice, but we, we're using Zoom today. It's very nice. But the two of us having coffee or having, having a lunch, a real lunch um, with each other is much better. I'm just... It's difficult to track you down these days, but <laughs> <laughs> but, but but it's uh, I mean that, that the personal touch is, is still I mean it's an old school thing, but it's still the real thing and still the thing to do. Yes, absolutely. I agree with you. I mentioned in the beginning you're traveling a lot. Where can people find you? I know on YouTube you're active. People can see where you're going and how you're traveling. Well, we've actually you. that's a bit of a. Um, a uh, bit of a blog, I guess, or a vlog. Uh, we've created a YouTube channel um, and we've created an Instagram account called uh, The Sweet Life Tribe. So, I mean, people are welcome to follow our adventure on The Sweet Life Tribe and thesweetlifetribe.com and you can just check it out. It's actually just to build memories for ourselves, but uh, people have liked the videos we've put out and some of the photos that we're taking and so on. So, I mean, guys, people are welcome to follow us over there. And I, I mean, I hope that through our travels, we can inspire some people to to travel themselves and really go for it. It's worth it to go on this path of being an entrepreneur because the payoff is massive. You know, the payoff is a life of freedom, a life of significance, making a difference, traveling, adventure. That's the payoff, you know? So really, I hope that our travels can inspire people to, to go for it. I agree. I think that's, li that's what life is all about. Um, to travel, see the world, explore new things. You can only get creative when you explore new things. Get out of your yeah. typical comfort zone. Yes. Um, so yeah, definitely. And live your passion. I mean, if you live your passion, you the money will flow from there. I mean, don't go for the money. Go for your passion. The money will flow and all the adventures from there will flow. That's right. So, Absolutely. Vincent, thank you very much. It's always a pleasure chatting to you. And uh, even if it's accounting or if it's the personal development, mm -hmm. it's always a pleasure and uh, enjoy your travels for the last four or five months and uh, i hope i can speak to you soon again thanks jasper the pleasure is all mine man it's been great talking to you awesome cheers man bye have a good one cheers <laughs>